Hello everyone, welcome to what if Issei was neglected and becomes the god of creation and destruction part 4. Before we start please go support Ethan1939 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Issei is a male in this story. Part 15 Nephilim vs Dragon When everyone heard that one of the dragons from the supernatural world was in the city, they were scared, especially Drag, although Issei did not see anything interesting or dangerous about him to scare. Rias. Akeno send a message, love, quick brother. Arena. Maybe we need Michael Sama's help to disappearing in a magic circle. Sona. Rias I know you want to protect your pawn. Maybe we get his R out of the city. But she was interrupted by Drag. Drag. No, she will just destroy the city until she reaches me. Issei. What's wrong with you? It's just a dragon uninteresting. Rias. Ice is not just a dragon, she is one of the five dragon kings Nerva she is team at the dragon of chaos and karma. Azazel. We can't limit ourselves. At that everyone saw Rias seat and there was Azazel looking at Issei specifically. All Issei. Azazel sensei. Issei. Hello Raven. Azazel. I told you to stop calling me that sigh, I never thought that someone with team at's level would reach the city. Issei. Is he really that strong to terrify the fractions? Azazel. Yes she is, seriously she can defeat a god looking at Azara, and it seems like she's coming for you Drag. Drag. Yes and also through my email colleague, Azara. He. Why for me? Drag. Well you'll see. At that Yui and Lin took their human form. Yui. What? Won't you say Drag? With mockery in her voice. Drag. Shut up, that's my problem, not yours. Issei. You know it's everyone since according to the crow she is coming for you, and she may destroy the city looking at Drag. Azara. You're right, what the hell did you do, Drag? Drag. Let's say we had a little problem in the past, Azazel. Well that doesn't matter looking at Issei boy, you will have to take care of her or at least convince her about her. Issei. I don't think she's as powerful as Echajera's looking at Azazel, Drag. Believe it boy, she is very strong, she is one of the few Ember's Swallowers who managed to form the five Dragon Kings, even the Fractions, and Valerie would have problems facing her, Issei. And if she is so strong why don't we seal her? Azazel. I'm sorry I couldn't create any seal for her, she's way above my level, but that's why you and Azara are here looking at both of them, and besides, it's not just that, their meeting created a prophecy in which both of them they are serious, Issei Azara. Prophecy. Azazel. Better for the others to arrive. Time skip. After a few minutes, the other factions had arrived at the place very nervous, but Issei, for some reason unknown to himself, knew that this prophecy would bring him problems with girls. Everyone was already in the occult club, and everyone was paying attention to what Azazel would say. Serzichas. Well Azazel, what is that prophecy? Azazel. My oracle predicted a possible future a few days ago, I wasn't sure what would happen so at first I ignored it, but now I guess it's very important. I saying that he created a gay sphere which began to snatch away the prophecy. Oracle. Listen Azazel, this is the future that possibly awaits you. His eyes turned blue and produced smoke that gradually became an illusion for everyone to see. One day two very powerful dragons will engage in a battle to the death. One the red celestial dragon and the other one of the dragon kings, both will fight to the death, but the successor of the heavens and hells will stop them. The queen does not pay attention to the words of the event, and to save her loved ones, her successor will have to dance like dragons to stop her. Everyone who listened saw a say, but they all had in mind what the oracle said about dancing. Azazel. And that is the prophecy Sirius a say I don't know how important you really are to the world, but it is your duty in future to face Tiamat. A say. I'm not worried about fighting her. I tease just what the oracle said about dancing. Greg. I think everyone here knows what that means, right? Aki. Not me, what is dancing? Sona. Neither do I and my entourage. Drag. For dragons there are only two meanings for dance, the first is a fight to the death and the other. All. Have hex all the girls who knew the meaning only said it with anger in their words and seeing us say badly. Serziches and the factions were surprised by what was said, but those who did not know the meaning of dance blushed a little on the part of the girls, but Issei's harem only looked at the boy badly. Azara. First I'm dead before I let my Oni-chan go dance with that dragon holding Issei's shirt while she said it. Rias. Ice looking at the boy with a dead look I'm not going to let you fight that dragon. Sona. Riaz I know you love Issei, but. Riaz. No I'm not going to let them take away what is rightfully mine. Zenovia. Riaz looking at his mistress. Riaz. No I won't allow it taking Issei and putting him on his chest don't worry, Ice just stay here hugging him my brother and Azara will take care of it. Serziches. We will try to talk to her, but we don't promise anything, for now just prepare yourselves the mass disappeared in a magic circle. Issei. This is already getting complicated while he was still hugging Rias. Yui. 
Don't worry, master, we can confront her, and since we have trained in controlling her emotions in her night of destruction mode, we can easily finish her off. Lin. Yes, we won't let master die and dance with that dragon taking a say and putting him on his chest like Rias. In another side, we can see the factions in Tiamat's people and his group. Tiamat. What do you want Mao? Looking at Serzich's along with the other mass. Serzich's. Dragon of Chaos and Karma Tiamat, the factions present here will not let you destroy the city, and we will not let you do as you please looking at Tiamat and your group the factions have reached peace, you should do the same. Tiamat. Get out of my way mass or I'll have to liquidate you it would be besides, you don't have to get involved, this is between Drag and me. Azazel. Maybe but they can solve that somewhere else without them destroying the city or killing someone in the middle of their battle. Tiamat. What did you say, Raven? Increasing his aura, Seraphil. Besides, this city is under the protection of a god looking at Tiamat. Tiamat. Yes, I have heard of that successor of god and the demon king smiling and I don't care if he gets in my way I will kill him. Tiamat took the form of a dragon, but Akuja used a seal to teleport her to another side. Serzich's. Good shield Akuja looking at his friend. Yumi. Tiamat Sama worried about his mistress. Akuja. Serzich's that seal won't last long, when she breaks free she will be very upset. Serzich's. Where did you send her? Akuja. I couldn't send her to the underworld since it would be a problem or somewhere in the human world, so I sent her to the battlefield where there are still dead giants. Seraphil. Where is it cold? Akuja. Yes, come on. The mass disappeared, leaving Tiamat's servants there. But the say. The say ran to the location where the mass were with the others, as she felt the increase in power, and everyone became worried. The say. I hope Alan doesn't do something stupid running with the other entourage behind her back. There he is. I hope Ani-sama is okay and doesn't get into a fight with Tiamat. Everyone arrived at the site and saw Tiamat's servants. Yumi. The Sekiruite pointing at Azara if I defeat you and take you to Tiamat and she will reward me with a smile. Jason. Lady Yumi, I'm careful, that white-haired boy is the god who defeated Loki pointing to Issei. Issei just put on his battle suit and waited for them to make a move. Fujiyama. Finally we will settle accounts and I will be able to face a god with a smile and drawn two swords. Issei just walked up to him and in the blink of an eye, he destroyed the two swords and grabbed Fujiyama by the neck. Issei, where is Tiamat with a death stare? Jason. Drop it launching to attack. Issei just dodged the attacks and gave them both a strong blow that easily knocked them out. Yumi, not seeing that her companions were moving away from her, thought that she had killed them and then saw Issei walking towards her. Issei. Where is it? With a dead and terrifying look. Yumi. As if I were going to tell you pointing her spear at Issei. Issei just unsheathed Yui and with some black fire, cut Yumi's spear in half. Yumi. H how could you cut it surprised it is made from the horns of a dragon and melted by the flames of the fire giants. Issei. Where is it? With a scary dead look that scared her. Yumi just let out a small high pitched scream out of fear and just answered. Yumi. I in the forest dot and near the corpses of the dead ice giant scared and nervous. The white haired man only took out his wings along with the others and flew away at great speed, leaving the girl lamenting that she had succumbed to fear. Yumi. I'm sorry Tiamat Sama regretful. Meanwhile we can see the seal that Akuja created being destroyed, and when doing so the mass could only see an immense shadow with enormous wings that were flapping rapidly, and when the smoke cleared, they could see Tiamat in a more human form, but without removing her dragon features. Serzich's. Don't let your guard down looking nervously at the huge shadow Akuja, can you create another seal? Akuja. Sorry, I can't somewhat agitated I used a lot of magic for that seal, and I can't create another one like the one before. Seraphil. We can't fight here either, there are many animals and yakes that live around. The dragon just ignored them, and then they felt the great power coming towards them, and they could see Issei and the others in the air and Issei looking at Tiamat seriously. Serzich's. Issei looking at the boy who was staring at the dragon, Tiamat. So you are that god that everyone respects. Looking at Issei hello Drake she said greeting with a scary smile that gave Drake chills. The dragon only shrunk a little and took on a more human shape, although without leaving aside some features that were clearly those of a dragon, such as her scales or horns. Issei. So you are the great Tiamat looking at the dragon you don't look strong enough to have you he said somewhat mockingly. The dragon only got angry with that comment and started attacking Issei. Issei. Guys, create a barrier dodging some blows from Tiamat, what will happen now will not be pretty with a smile. Issei only covered her right arm with black flames and hit Tiamat hard in the face, causing her to fly from the blow and crash to the ground. Issei. Do it now. The mass and other people reacted and did what Issei said and created a barrier, so that the outside would not suffer the damage from the combat they were going to have. Yui. I love, I feel like the dragon's power creates more and more. Issei only saw how the crater where Tiamat was was enlarging, and he could see how Tiamat took on a larger shape, and he could still see a huge blue dragon that gave off an intense light. Issei. 
So that's your true form. Looking at the dragon while unsheathing Yui and Lin let's dance. Issei and Tiamat just attacked each other without any fear. Outside the barrier, everyone saw Issei masterfully fighting Issei using his swords and also his new revolver, making cuts and the lightning-filled shots passing through his scales. Akuja. Wow he can fight on par with Tiamat surprised. Azizel. We can too watching Issei fight. Serzichas. Yes but we would be a disaster looking at Issei better let's leave it to Issei, he is more capable and stronger. Rias. Whispering ice touching her chest worriedly. Asper. Issei senpai worried. Hineko only took out her tail and cat ears, and she was alarmed. Hineko. Or not looking at Issei through the barrier Issei Kun is in danger. Zenovia. What do you mean? Is he losing? Hineko. No, maybe they can't feel it, but I can looking at Issei he is using all his power worried. Sarah. What he's using that night form again. The cane. And he's losing. Hineko. No he doesn't use it yet something calm, but he is using all his power in his base state, but I don't know why he doesn't use it, and. I smell Issei Kun's blood. Those who heard that were surprised, and it only worried the Issei girls and the factions more. But Issei. Issei was bleeding for the first time in a long time, he had his and Tiamat's blood all over his body, on his head from a strong blow that the dragon gave him, and also on his wings. Issei. Shit breathing heavily he's very strong wiping the blood from his face and using the white flames to heal the cuts and wounds on his body Yui, I can't use the shadows at all, and when I do they are very weak, what's wrong with them? Yui. It is the fault of Tiamat's light and power, only intense light can weaken her creations made of shadows, Issei. And she's almost a shining beacon. Lin. Yes, but the more light I am, the stronger I am and the creations made of light are more resistant, Master, Issei. Well sent to Yui and taking blue rose in his other hand, I will have to take advantage of that to my advantage, Issei created thousands of swords made of light and attacked the dragon Graiaiaia. Outside the barrier, the mass were using all of his power so that the barrier could hold long enough, but it was almost impossible, since the power of both of them was too great for them. Serzichas. Shit using more power so the barrier doesn't collapse the barrier is cracking. Seraphal. How does he have so much power? Sona and Rhea's entourage tried to help, but it was useless as each time they increased the strength of the Issei barrier, and Tiamat kept cracking it with every blow they gave. Azizel. We can't go on like this forever. The barrier stopped cracking in a moment, and everyone calmed down, but then they saw how the barrier took on a reddish color, and they saw the shadow of a huge dragon which broke the barrier with one blow. Everyone could see a desolate forest which was burning in blue and black flames, and the sky turned red in a few moments. Then they saw a huge blue dragon that had launched itself at them. Tiamat. Dryag. Everyone was scared, but Azara formed her armor and gave her a strong blow by drastically increasing her power, sending her flying. Akuja. That's Tiamat's true form. Tiamat. Drake dies. The dragon launched a slash which Azara dodged, but in the middle of the road, the slash was directed at Sona and her entourage. Seraphal. Sona chant screaming trying to reach her sister. The black-haired woman just closed her eyes and waited for the blow, but it never came, and when she opened them, she saw an albino with blood all over his body and his wings full of scratches and blood. The boy only stopped the blow with his own physical strength. Issei. Are you okay Sona? Looking at the black-haired girl. Sona. Yes she said surprised and in a low voice, but Issei heard. Issei just smiled at her and then looked at Tiamat who was exerting strength to crush the boy with her paw. Azara with a strong blow separated Tiamat from his brother, and Issei fell to his knees tired while he healed himself with his white flames. Azara. Oni-chan walking with her brother you're bleeding, Issei. Yes, but not all of it is my blood looking at Tiamat with a smile. Everyone at that moment saw that Tiamat was also full of wounds, her right wing was full of blood from a cut, her legs were also full of cuts, and she had a large cut on her back and another scar on her neck almost serving as her throat. Issei. Riaz, take Azara getting up I'll take care of it. Riaz. Ice you can't. Azara. Oni-chan. But you is right, you can't do it alone worried maybe if I confronted her with you. Issei. Nuo I won't let him hurt you looking at Tiamat I won't let him take away the only family I have. Those words only surprised everyone as Azara cried. Serzichas. What can we do we can't create another barrier. Issei. Not you but. Yui I want you to take your human form and create a barrier. Yui. But master if I do it you won't be able to take your knight form, how will he win? Issei. Rules 5 always have an ace up your sleeve smiling please do it otherwise many people will be affected in the city. Yui. I don't care about other people, I care about you Baka. Issei. Then create and maintain that barrier until I beat him, do it for me okay. Yui. You're an idiot while taking the human form of him. Yui. If you die, I'll kill you, you understand what I mean kissing Issei. Issei. Don't worry, I can't die yet with a smile. Yui was only happy at the words of her master and created a tremendous magical barrier that trapped Issei and Tiamat. Issei. Well Lin, you're ready, taking blue rose in her other hand. Lin. 
Of course I love Diamat. Damn brat I now. Diamat began to shoot fire from her mouth like a dragon, but Issei only dodged it by flying with his wings and covered Yui and Blue Rose with fire and light, and a great thunder came from the sky covering Issei and loading his revolver. Issei. Swallow this, crazy shooting with Blue Rose a bullet full of light and rays. The shot alone created a huge glow that shone on everyone in the area and a large green of smoke. Lin. Master, I don't feel her presence. Issei. I killed her agitated odd odd finally. Ah. But a huge hand grabbed Issei and threw him into a mountain which embedded him in it. Lin. Master, is this okay? Issei. If it's just a scratch cough cough spitting out some blood. Issei saw Tiamat coming out of the smoke with a large jug on his shoulder. Tiamat. Damn brat looking at the hole in his shoulder if he had hit me in the header chest, he would have killed me using his powers to close the wound. Tiamat. I have to admit that you are strong, not many make me use all my power looking at Issei, but unfortunately you protect that silly carrier sister from that traitor, and you are a hindrance. Issei. Traitor. What are you taking about? Outside the barrier, Drag. Hell no. Bizarre. Like hell no. What the hell did you do Drag? Drag. Well. With Issei. Diamat. What? You protect that idiot without knowing the reason. Haha ha, well I'll tell you with a smile you see when that idiot had his fights against Albion, he asked me for an artifact, a sacred treasure to win, I in return asked him for something in return after his fight.but, that idiot I so bother the fractions, then they sealed them, losing my sacred treasure and without giving me what I asked for in exchange somewhat irritated to remember, they say. Treasure. What kind of treasure? What, was it so important for you to start hunting Drake? Diamat. That doesn't matter. They say. And you couldn't just search for that stupid treasure something annoying. Diamat. Don't be stupid, the treasure was lost many years ago, specifically a thousand years ago, it must have already been lost or rusted by time. Outside the barrier, Greg. Azara break the barrier and stop it now before it's too late. Azara. What? Because he's just explaining why he hunts you all the time, idiot. Greg. Just do what I tell you and stop her. With the say, the say. And then she's just upset because she lost your stupid artifact. Diamat. That's not what bothers me at all, what really bothers me is that he didn't fulfill his part of the deal. At that moment, Drake's cry could be heard outside the barrier. Drake. Tiamat please stop. Tiamat. That idiot was supposed to have offspring with me after defeating Albion and winning his silly battle. Issei. What babies dot so he and you would get married and have children. Tiamat. Yes but he didn't keep his part of the deal, so I will kill him for being weak and allowing himself to be sealed. Outside the barrier, Azara. Drake, that's true. Drake. Yes, you see at that time I was a very powerful dragon and dot well, let's say that I had no shortage of females, I also even took human form to reproduce with some, as I said that a light came out of Drake's hand dot eyes are showing a drag in human form, Drake. But when they sealed me I discovered the Tiamat in a fit of rage, murdered all my descendants and partners, after that I could only hide since if she found me she would murder my bearer and me in the process. A say from afar watched Drake and Tiamat with disappointment, Drake. Don't look at me like that boy it's not my fault, with Issei. Issei just remained silent, and his eyes were covered by his hair while he looked down. Diamat. Well, lots of talk, it's time for me to finish you off, and then go for Drake looking at Issei. Issei. All this time it was just a bucking love fight, while he brought out white fire from all over his body. Diamat. How dare you insult me like that. Issei just took out his wings again and left the mountain, and he hit Tiamat hard in the face, sending her flying. Diamat. How impossible. Issei's wounds were only healing, his right wing suddenly turned white, surprising everyone. Issei. Damn bucking dragons I will judge them all. Issei shouted a pillar of light and white fire covered Issei and Yui on the outside, only used all the power he had, so that the barrier would not be destroyed. I am the one who will dominate the heavens. Aha ha well my son I will help you beat this dragon so you can protect your loved ones. The voice was heard within the pillar of light, and from the way he spoke, they deduced that he was the ancient god of the Bible. I will defeat my enemies with my strength, and I will defeat the enemies of this world with my fire. Let's go son to defeat that melodramatic dragon. I destroyed the darkness with my light, and I laugh at the hate and pain. It's time to prove that you are my successor, my son. I am the king of the archangels and god of creation, and you will burn in my eternal flames that will burn your sins. At the end of the prayer the pillar of light became more intense, but in a few seconds it disappeared, and everyone could see a say with an angel's clothing and a hood that covered his face. Everyone was surprised and even more so Michael since that was the armor and battle suit that the god of the bible used before he died. Seraphal. Is that what you meant by Oz up your sleeve? Michael. That power is identical to my father's surprised. Everyone was in socks, but Yui was a little worried about the situation. Yui. Master, you can whispering, but the say. The say only saw Tiamat, and she was only in shock because of the immense power she felt. Tiamat. 
Why you're that power surprised you are not a simple god. Issei just saw her seriously without any expression, but then a thick but melodious and angelic voice came out of Issei. Issei. Dragon Queen Tiamat I will only give you one chance, abandon this path of revenge, or I will have to eliminate you. Tiamat. A brat like you won't give me orders looking angrily at Issei, I don't care if you're a god, if you get in my way I will kill you. The dragon spewed fire from her jaws, but the fire didn't even burn Issei's clothing a little. Issei just raised his sword a little, and hundreds of her angels made of light appeared and launched themselves at the dragon. Tiamat felt the infernal slashes and cuts that the angel's swords caused her great pain that only made her roar. The dragon was only blonde and screamed from alone, at one point she was able to destroy several clones, but it was useless Issei just created more and more, and in a moment Issei with a quick slash, had cut off one of her front legs, making her fall to the ground. Issei didn't stop and then cut off one of her wings, and then cut off one of her hind legs. Tiamat was dying. She could only see Issei with her beautiful white wings in front of her, while her angel stood behind her. Of the. Tiamat. Why you dot what the hell. Are you. Dying. Issei. I am the successor of the God of the Bible, and the people who want to take away the people I love or destroy this world will perish for all eternity. The Amat, upon knowing that, only resigned herself to dying, and although she would have liked to be a mother, unfortunately she will never become one. The Amat. Ha ha dot well at least dot I died before the God and successor. Cough cough dot of the God who created everything dot ha ha. The Amat only closed her eyes, but saw a huge white light which covered her, and after a few seconds she opened her eyes and could see that she was completely cured, even some scars that she had more than 100 years ago were disappearing. Dot. The Amat. What? Feeling her previously severed legs reconnected to her body and her previously severed wing what happened? They say. Tiamat has seen your wish and it will be fulfilled, but in exchange you will leave that stupid path of revenge against Drag, understood. Tiamat only upon hearing the boy's words did she just begin to cry, and upon knowing that he forgave her, she only knew that she was an angel. Tiamat. Thank you Issei Sama bowing her head. And music. Issei at one point fell to the ground, and the great angelic energy had disappeared. Issei only took her normal form, but her hair had grown, reaching a little more than her shoulders. Yui at that moment decided on the barrier and ran to Issei with the others, and only when they arrived, they saw Lin asleep on Issei's chest, and a Tiamat crying from apparently happiness being on the ground still in her dragon form. Dot. All. I say Issei, Kanemo. Issei's girls just hugged Issei, and he was very relaxed having just come out of a battle. Issei. Hello guys, what's wrong? Why do they cry? Rias. You are an idiot, idiot, Baka while she cried and hugged Issei. Azara. Damn suicidal idiot do not do that again crying and hugging Issei. Yui. I love Baka hugging him. All the girls just kissed Issei, including those from Sona's entourage, but they only gave him the excuse that it was a thank you for having prevented Tiamat from crushing them. At that Tiamat stopped crying and took on a slightly more human form that surprised everyone. Tiamat. He is strong, yes, very strong. Tiamat just approached Issei and just grabbed him by his trench coat and kissed him in everyone's face. Issei was only surprised, and when he separated from the kiss, he only created even more confusion by saying a few simple words. Tiamat. Yes, Issei Sama, I accept kissing him again. Everyone already had their jaws on the ground, but the Issei girls reacted quickly and pushed both of them away. Rias. What do you think you're doing, crazy dragon separated to Issei from Tiamat, Yui? Yes, after all the madness you cause because you think you have the right to kiss my master hugging Issei possessively, Tiamat. What? After all he will give me babies with a smile right Issei Sama. Everyone looked at Issei, but he just lay down on the ground and started laughing with a smile on his face. Rias. I spock a womanizer when saying that I just looked askance at Issei, and she smiled too. Issei. Guys looking at everyone let's go home with a smile. Everyone was happy to see that smile and just answered. All. Hi. I'm Skip Issei's house. Everyone was in the living room looking at an Issei with a blue haired girl who hugged Issei with a beautiful smile, while Tiamat told guys what happened in battle. Tiamat. So that's what happened. Rias. I can't allow that Issei is mine and only mine you understand dragon looking at Tiamat. Tiamat. And you understand that I can destroy you in just a certain moment looking at Rias. Rias. As if you can handle me, horrendous dragon. Tiamat. What did you say menstruation hairs? They both just gave each other a death glare, but Issei calmed them down. Issei. Girls please, we don't want any more fights today calming both of them. They just sat calmly but still looking at each other defiantly. Serzichas. Wait so you want to have babies with Issei. Tiamat. Yes, as he promised he would fulfill my wish happy. Azazel. And that's it. Issei. Apparently looking at Tiamat she wants to be a mother. Everyone was silent for a moment, but the Issei girls just started laughing. Rias. Ha ha ha, who would say laughing and looking at Tiamat the great queen of the dragons, was just a desperate woman with mockery. Tiamat. 
What did you say you damn bitch Gremory? Tibba. It seems that the prophecy was right looking at Issei with a mocking smile, you. Well, brother, you said that you will fulfill his wish holding out a laugh, and you can't take it back now, brother. Serziches. Well your sacrifice will not be in vain Issei about to laugh. Azazel, Serziches, Akuja, Kiba and Yu could only laugh, while Issei could only curse them in his mind. Azara. Well, but the truth is I highly doubt that my Oni-chan will have children with you, since he has made it clear several times that he will only have children with the women he loves looking mockingly at Tiamat. Tiamat. Well, I'll just have to make him fall in love with me happy, and I won't let him go, since he is the only male who has defeated me. Issei. How many women have told me that already? Tiamat just looked at Issei and the girl's mocking smiles, which irritated her a little. She noticed Rhea's reaction, and she just smiled when an idea came to her. Tiamat. Don't worry, Issei-sama, I can also take other forms if this one is not to your liking. By saying that, I only take a form similar to Rhea's, but with blue hair. Issei only blushed a little at how cute she looked, but then he answered. Issei. Why do you think that way is better? Diamat. Well I thought you would like it more since she is all covered with your essence, I thought you would like this body more. She said innocently. Serziches. Wait, my sister is all covered in her essence. Diamat. Well, you see, the males mark their women with their essence inside them, I think you know it as seed or sperm, and also the three of them are also marked by Issei-sama, pointing to Azara Yui and Lin. Everyone understood with those words of the dragon what she was referring to, and the aforementioned were all blushing, while Issei only hid between Tiamat's breasts out of shame. Serziches. Your damn hybrid you took the innocence from my little sister taking him by the neck, Sarah. Sister, why didn't you tell us that you and Oni-chan already? She blushes twelve times because of what she thought. The cane. If we had blackmailed him so that he would do it to us too pouting. Akeno. Ara, Ara but you looking at Rhea's how lucky, Ice Kun already accepts her as a woman, you are very bad but you, didn't you tell me, I would have blackmailed him a little too with a smile, but well, tell us what he is like in the bed with a blush and a smile. Some of Issei's girls only approached Rhea's to listen to Rhea's statement, and others only saw Issei in a bad way like the Citri entourage. Sona. MMM seeing Issei you're just a womanizer with a serious look and a terrifying aura. Issei. Serziches, let go, you're suffocating me. Serziches. I don't care if you're a god I'll kill you. That scene only continued for a while, but then everything calmed down, and everyone then went home and to sleep from the long and tiring day. Part 16 Quiet Day. The day was a calm day, but for an albino who was waking up it would be a bad day. Issei would wake up and slowly open his eyes, and then he was just shocked by what he saw. All the girls in the house next to Tiamat who had moved in with them were there lying next to Issei naked and others only in their underwear. Issei. Please tell me I didn't do something crazy last night somewhat nervous. Rias. Don't worry, you didn't do anything last night with us happy hugging Issei, although maybe I would have liked you to do it with a flirtatious smile. Issei. Rias, why are you all naked in my bed? Rias. Well. We didn't like that you almost died in the fight against Tiamat. A and D. We didn't want to leave you alone at night, hugging Issei more you scared us all, and well. Let say we wanted to be with you. Issei. I understand Sai well I think it's partly my fault looking at his girls thank you for worrying about me but dot that they all came to sleep with me, I don't think it was a coincidence looking at Rias. Rias. Well. Blushing let's say that we were planning to do other things. Issei. Like other things looking at Rias were they trying to gape me or something. Rias. Well. Blushing not completely, just play with your body a little and dot maybe get one or two children embarrassed. Issei. From now on I will put a lock on my door looking at Rias somewhat disappointed. Rias, seeing that look, just hid in Issei's chest, embarrassed. Rias. Don't look like that embarrassed the idea was a Keno's, and we couldn't sense when we saw you sleeping so peacefully we thought better of it, and we just slept with you. Issei. Sigh well, it doesn't matter getting up I'll go prepare breakfast leaving the room. Time skip. A day passed calmly, but for Issei it was a nuisance, since all the girls were making advances to him much more than before, probably due to the revelation that she had already done it with four of them. The day was just like a hell of breasts and panties for Issei, since they used all their attributes to seduce and make the little Issei fall into temptation, who only tried to ignore their advances, but he knew that if he continued like this, he wouldn't be able to last much longer. Dot. Time skip next day. Now we can see Issei walking to his school, but as always he was the center of attention since he was hugged by his harem and was also the envy of all men. Issei. Hey can't you get away from me a little? Feeling Rias and Akeno's breasts on each arm and Murayama's on her back, Akeno. Ara, don't you like it when we hug you? Hineko. Bad Issei Kun hugging Issei's waist. Issei. Sai just forget it controlling his instincts to not rip off everyone's uniforms. I'm skip classroom. Issei just sat at his desk calmly, but still had a few glances at him. Issei. I'm always the center of attention, how annoying. Issei's classes just happened normally, and Issei was going to distract himself by playing and singing a little. 
Issei. At least no one bothers me here entering the music room. Issei just grabbed a guitar and put a little song on his phone and started singing. Issei only felt calm when he played, and when he finished he just smiled and a small bird that entered through the window placed itself in his hair, as if it were a nest. Issei just ignored that and simply left him alone since that sometimes happened because of his angel aura. Issei just leaned back in his chair, but he saw someone at the door watching him, and it was President Sona. Issei. Hello Sona-san greeting kindly what's up? Sona was just looking at Issei, but with a small blush on her face. Sona. I want you to help me with something Issei-san looking at the boy. Issei. And that's it. Sona. Remember the pile of paperwork I asked you to do for me? Issei. Yes, why? Sona. Well. Let say that that paperwork tripled when we said we were going on a trip to Tokyo, sighing the teachers came up with the idea of taking exams, so that those who passed would be the ones who would go on the trip. A and D, those who didn't would stay to study. Issei. Well, I have free time so let's go taking Sona's hand which made her blush, and they just left towards the council room, student council room, Momo. Well Kaichu, here is all the paperwork leaving several towers of papers that reach the ceiling, Tamo. Well we leave you a by Issei San looking at Issei with a blush and saying goodbye. All the girls said goodbye to him with a blush, and Saji just ignored him, while Sona and Issei were left to do the paperwork. Time skip, Issei. Damn this will never end seeing that they had several stacks of papers left, and seeing that it was already getting late Yui, Lin, tell the girls that I'll be late. Yui and Lin just took their human form and nodded and jumped out the window going home. Issei just sighed and created more clones of him to try to speed up the pace of what he was doing. Time skip night, at school it was already 7pm, and both young people already knew their paperwork was finished, thanks to the Issei shadow clone boys. Issei. Finally lying on the sofa in the room damn how much paperwork looking at Sona also tired, if you had done it alone, it would take you one or three days to finish Sona-san. Sona. Well it's my responsibility as president I guess sitting next to Issei. They both just stood in a somewhat strange silence until Sona spoke. Sona. Hey Issei-san, can I ask you a question somewhat nervous? Issei. Sure, which one is it? Sona. Why you really slept with Ria's and the others blushing? Issei, upon hearing that question, just swallowed hard and responded. Issei. Why yes yeah, somewhat embarrassed. Sona just lowered her head a little, and Issei saw that, but she got an idea. Issei. Sona sent stay here leaving the place. After a few minutes Issei arrived with a guitar and sat next to Sona. Sona. What are you doing? Looking curiously at Issei. Issei. Well I want you to give me your opinion of this song with a smile can you? Sona just blushed at the situation she got herself into, and just nodded her head for Issei to start playing. Issei just started playing, and the lyrics of the song made Sona blush a little, since it seemed like he was dedicating it to her. After finishing playing Issei saw Sona all blushing but with a big smile. Sona. It was a beautiful song happy. Issei. He, thank you scratching the back of his neck I was going to dedicate the song to someone important to me. Sona. And that person is. Issei. Of course you surprising Sona well I wrote it when I was a child, but. I still remember a little of the lyrics. Sona upon hearing that just started crying, worrying Issei a little. Issei. Sona, are you okay? Seeing the girl if you didn't like it, then. But he was interrupted. Sona. No, it was a beautiful song seeing Issei happy thank you for making it for me, while she threw herself at Issei and kissed him. Issei only returned the kiss while he hugged the black-haired girl. When Issei and Sona separated from the kiss, they only looked at each other for a moment longer and emerged with another longer and more passionate kiss. Issei only lightly touched Sona's body as she caressed her chest. Issei was little by little losing his reason, the great mental accumulation of lust and breasts that the other girls implanted in her head, was about to vent with Sona. Lemon skip please read it on website. Sona. Okay a little blushing because of the request I would make and why don't you stay the night at my house blushing. Hearing that, Issei just smiled and kissed Sona tenderly, who only accepted the kiss, and they both snuggled together before getting dressed, and Issei took Sona home and slept all night with her. Time skip next day. Issei was waking up and could see Asona sleeping on her chest with a smile. Issei just stroked her hair and after a while they both woke up, had breakfast and Issei went home, but not before she said goodbye to Sona with a loving kiss. Now we can see Issei walking home, ignoring what awaited her when she arrived. Upon entering the house, Issei could only see the looks of death and terrifying aura of all the girls in the place. Rias. Hello Issei with a terrifying look where were you? Azara. If you didn't arrive at night and had us worried with a terrifying aura behind her, you. Hello brother, it took you a long time, don't you think? Hiba. Did you still spend the night with Sona at school? Issei. Yes, sigh the paperwork was immense trying to lie, Yui. Well if that's true you won't mind if Lin and I transform into our necklace forms right? Issei. E. Lin. In our necklace form we can see her memories to see if she tells the truth she loved. 
Issei only paled when he heard that, he knew that if they saw everything would get worse. Issei. Sai yes well I think so. Running to her room, all. Issei hi do come here, you. Damn watching the scene Issei has it difficult. Gibba. What do you think Alan did, you. How about a bet? Smiling, Gibba. Okay returning the smile, I'm skip. Issei can be seen bound and gagged on the couch while the girls just interrogated him. Rias. And tell us what they did. With a bad face, Issei. We didn't really do anything nervous. Azara. Yui, Lin they both only got dangerously close, but Issei stopped them. Issei. Okay okay sigh her and I well dot after finishing the paperwork. Well. Nervous. Azara. Did they? Issei. Yes waiting for her fate. The girls were only a little surprised, but upon hearing that answer the terrifying aura only increased. Yuu. Ha 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 I won with a mocking smile pay Kiba. Kiba. Shit taking out some bills president failed me giving her the money. Rias. Well, nothing happens reassuring. Issei. E. Azara. Yes, well we already expected it, but in exchange with a flirtatious smile, all. You will have to compensate us Issei Issei kun ice ice kun. Issei. Damn. I'm skip. After a while Issei was the slave of each of them throughout the day, but fortunately none of them dared to ask them for anything explicit, now we can see Issei tired sitting on the couch with the others. You. Hey brother getting Issei's attention. Issei. What? You. Did you really do it with the president? Issei. I already said yes he said reluctantly. Kiba. Man, you won't leave girls in the world if you continue like this he said with some mockery. Issei. Shut up Kiba it's not something I wanted either, it just happened. Asper. Well Issei senpai, good luck with the girls he said innocently. Issei. Thank you but I think you don't understand well. I'm skip nights. Issei was on the roof watching the stars and after a while reflecting on his actions, he walked tiredly towards his room but ran into a certain ex-nun in the hallway. Asia. Issei san, what are you doing here? As he looked out the hallway window, Issei. I only saw the stars, it helps me think and reflect on things, and what are you doing here? Asia. Me too watching the sky it's a beautiful night today. They both only saw a glimpse of the sky, and Issei only said goodbye to Asia. Issei. Well, goodbye, Asia, have a good night crying but was stopped by the blonde, Asia. Issei sent stopping Issei can I ask you something nervous, Issei. And that's it, Asia. Well you still have to compensate us and well. Blushing M can you give me a BB kiss? Issei only analyzed the request and accepted since since she is like that she doubted that she would try to seduce him or do something else, but for a strange reason she felt that it was not going to be just a kiss. Issei. S sure, just one somewhat blushing at the request. Issei only approached Asia and gave her a somewhat shy kiss on the lips, but enough so that when she separated she wanted more, so she kissed Issei again, and he only reciprocated, little by little the kiss became more lustful, and Issei he only hugged the blonde with love. Asia just started running her hands through Issei's shirt touching her body, but Issei stopped her. Issei. Asia, what are you doing? Somewhat nervous because of the blonde's attitude, Asia. Issei san dot I want us to be one blushing like you did with Butchu with a tender and loving look please please. Issei couldn't stand Asia's adorable and tender face and just kissed her, both of them just hugged each other, and Issei took Asia, carrying her in a bridal manner, taking her to her room. Lemon skip please read it on website. They both just fell tired in bed, but a voice brought them both out of their thoughts. Rias. So scaring both of them who saw Rias, Izara, Yui and Lin at the door of the room, I guess she's one of us now sighing, Yui. I love being a womanizer few 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 laughing, Lin. Master, it's not fair, I want to too pouting, Azara. Well since you did it with Asia looking at the blonde you won't mind doing it with us too right? With a flirtatious smile, the four of them broke out and jumped on Issei, hugging him. Issei. This will be a long night seeing his girls. Part 17 Trip to Tokyo. The trip to Tokyo was approaching and as the other days passed, Issei was a little happier being with his girls. The last few days Roswes became a teacher at Kuo Academy, and let's say that all the men were totally excited to have a hexy teacher now with them, although some others were just alert, since their new teacher always blushed or spoke to Issei very formally. In the case of the others, they have been more attached to him, and also a certain president has been happier and always thinking about the albino and Issei, also stopped by to talk to Sona or spent time in the courtyard or the occult club. Time skip train. Now we can see Issei on a large train that was heading to the city of Tokyo, Ria spoke with his entourage and gave them some papers with stamps so that they could enter the different sanctuaries that they would go to visit. The trip just started and Issei just looked out the window board, but then Yu, Kiba and Gaspar arrive. Yu. Hello brother sitting next to him what's wrong, don't tell me you did it with another girl. Issei just stayed silent, but that was enough for them to understand. Kiba. And who was it with this time? Curious. Issei. Shut up what do they want? Asper. We came to accompany you he said innocently. Issei. 
Issei continued looking out the window somewhat distracted until he spoke, and then what did they want? Buu. To tell the truth, we want to ask you something nervous we want you to give Kiba and me some advice about women. Issei just stayed analyzing what his brother said until he could say something. Issei. I thought you were gay looking at you and Kiba, Kiba. What with a small vein on his forehead we are not gays, Issei. Sorry, I always saw you together, I thought. He was interrupted, both. Of course not, you idiot. A scream caught everyone's attention, and they just calmed down again and asked again. Buu. And will you give us some advice yes or no? Issei. Well, it depends on which girl you are trying to conquer, but tell me who they are. Buu. W. Well I like nervous and somewhat blushing Kiryu from your class. Issei. Isn't that Asia's best friend at school? Buu. Yes, Kiba. And I like her. Kadis is also from your class, and she is friends with Kiryu and Murayama. Issei. Well, what do you want me to say, just invite them to come out, idiot surprising both of them, Buu. Yes sure. Issei. Listen idiot sighing you are the two playboys of the academy, any woman would fall on her knees before you, so why don't you just ask them out, the only thing that can make them reject you, is that they are both in love with someone else serious, Kiba. Well we trust you looking at Issei. Issei. Yes, but prevent them from discovering that they are demons looking at both of them, I think Rias won't have enough pieces. Both. Hi, I'm Skip. After the trip, our protagonist had arrived in Kyoto, and his girls were only surprised by what they saw, since for some it was Ivan's first time in Kyoto. Now we can see Issei walking, but in the middle of the road he saw a man who began to hit everyone without discrimination, but in the end he stopped the police officer. I'm Skip. Issei was in charge of a huge hotel that apparently the Gremory were the owners, since she could sense that some demons were working there. And Rias also told him that it was one of the many hotels that he had under his control. Both genders were divided into men and women, so that nothing improper would happen, although a certain duo of perverts were excited to spy on the girls, but teacher Roswiss only stopped them and punished them, so that that would not happen. I'm Skip. Now we can see how all of Issei's classmates were having fun going to various temples, and Kiba and Yu were only talking to their secret loves looking for the moment to ask them out. After a while Issei separated from the group and began to walk around, but a small plump took him by the hand and stopped him. Excuse me taking Issei's hand are you Issei Hayudu? Issei turned around and could only see a small girl with fox ears and tail wearing a small yukata. Issei. Looks like Kaneko. You are. Issei. Yes I am and you are a girl. Sorry, my name is Kunu, I am the heir to the Yakai clan, and I need your help holding Issei please. Issei saw the worry in her eyes, and then Issei just stroked her head to calm her down a little. Issei. Don't worry, I'll help you little one with a smile. When the girl saw Issei's smile, she blushed a little but she was just happy, but then some Yakais that looked like crows appeared. Yakai. Miss Kunu looking at how Issei touched her ears, how dare you touch the princess. The Yakais only launched themselves against Issei, but Issei saw several swords of light appear that were very close to the crow's necks, stopping them. Issei. They are not your allies looking at the girl, Kunu. Yes, looking at the Yakais don't worry, he is Issei Hayuadu surprising the Yakais he will help us save my mother. Issei only decided the swords and the Yakais only kneeled before Issei. Yakai. Forgive us, Issei-sama, we didn't know it was you kneeling. Issei only calmed down the Yakais, and after a while Issei's companions arrived at the place. Zenovia. Issei Azizel wants to talk to us looking at the kneeling Yakais what happened. Arena. I think Issei was just having fun looking at Issei with a smile. Time skip. The boys only arrived at the hotel and in a special room the boys were waiting with the student council for Azizel and Serafal. Azizel. Well appreciating in a magic circle with Seraphil Issei, you barely arrived and you're almost causing problems looking at the albino, Issei. They started it and Nadia was also hurt sighing now what's wrong with Azazel? I can't have a quiet day without something weird or supernatural hitting my face. Azazel. Well let's say that the queen of the Yakase disappeared. Issei. Did she disappear? Azazel. Well first tell me how you found that girl pointing to Kunu who was sitting on Issei's lap, Issei. Well, this girl appeared and asked me for help to save her mother, then only the Yakase appeared, and you already know the rest. Azizel. So the rumors are true. Looking at the girl, who knew? Yes, but with Lord Issei we can get my mother back looking at Issei, according to many gods you are very strong, you even defeated one of the dragon kings, so please help me save my mother. Issei. Sure, I'm going to rescue your mother girl stroking the girl's head. Azizel. Well, first eat and rest, then we will talk about this topic. After a while everyone was eating, but a certain Mao was looking at Issei, but when he looked at her he only looked away from her. As Issei finished eating he heard Seraphil calling him. Seraphil. Issei hi would you serious see can I talk to you alone nervous. Issei just nodded and they went somewhere a little more private. Seraphil. 
is say, I want to apologize to you Bao and I know that at first I treated you badly, but it was because I didn't know you well looking at his say, now I know that you are a good guy, and that you help others no matter what, and also thank you for save my sister in the fight against Tiamat. Is say. It's okay Sir Awful after all we are friends, and I have to take care of you with a smile that made Sir Awful blush, and well, let's just say that I can't allow any of you to get hurt. Sir Awful just smiled at Issei's comment and gave him a small kiss on the cheek. Sir Awful. I hope you don't bother my sister and take care of her looking at Issei with a small blush, and the kiss was like a small thank you, don't get any strange ideas blushing. Issei just smiled, and then they both went back to the others. After a while Issei and the others just returned to the hotel, but Kunu did not leave Issei's side, Issei only thought that she was afraid of being alone, so he innocently told her that she could stay with him, and she accepted with a smile. When Issei entered the hotel they told him that they had made a mistake in his room, and in exchange, they gave him a luxury suite. Kunu and Issei upon entering only saw a huge room with many luxuries, and Kunu just wanted to check every corner of the room. Only when Issei entered she saw a small note on the table, and when she read it, only a drop of sweat appeared on the back of her neck. Zioticus. Hello boy Serzich has told me that you had already made great progress with Rias, so as a thank you I give you this room, that you enjoy it, and if you can I want you to get my daughter pregnant in less than a year, but well, that is your decision. P.S. Venelana sends you hugs and kisses. When Issei finished reading the letter he just burned it and settled into the luxurious room. After a while, a certain duo of perverts was happy that none of the academy's playboys were around, so they could prevent them from spying on the girls, but that idea faded, since the church trio was going to visit Issei to seduce him, but Roswes, like a good teacher, reprimanded her and prevented that from happening. In another part of the hotel, the girls only talked among themselves, but certain girls were a little worried about the albino. Azara. Do you think Oni-chan is fine alone? Looking at his butt you, Rias. If he has Yui and Lin, and is also taking care of that Kunu girl thinking of the albino and the fox girl, it seems the Kunu became very attached to Issei in a short time. Asia. It does seem like she is her older brother or her father. The girls only thought about Issei for a while, but a certain sadist spoke about other topics. Akeno. And tell me, have you had a breakthrough with Ice Kun? Asia only blushed next to Rias and Azara. Akeno. Ara Ara it seems like Asia already beat us looking at Asia with a perverted smile, but it makes me jealous, I haven't had that luck yet, I'll have to push my game harder. Zenovia. Asia, is that true? Asia only blushed, but a certain blonde was curious. Irina. And how is he in bed? Somewhat curious. Asia only hid behind Rias, and Azara stopped them. Azara. Sorry but we are not going to share our Hexwill experience as it would be, but we will only tell you that when he does it with you, you will not be able to separate yourself from him with a blush. Rias. Yes, he blushes he is like an insatiable machine when you think he will no longer be able to stay safe, and will continue until he faints with a nasal amorgia when reminding me what they did with him. The others only absorbed what they heard and were determined to sleep with Issei, no matter what the cost. Time skip next day. The next day the Issei group alone went to the Yakai world where Seraphal and Azazel were waiting to welcome them. Who knew? Well, this is the Yakai world, I hope he likes it while he took Issei's hand, taking him to different places for him to see. Azazel. You guys are late looking at the group you don't know how upset Seraphal gets when he gets impatient. Seraphal. Shut up well now that you have arrived, just come, we will update you on the situation. After a small talk they explained the Queen Yakai Yazaka disappeared while she was trying to meet someone. Azazel. Well we collaborated with Yakes to find some clues to Yazaka's whereabouts, but we didn't find anything serious those who kidnapped her must be experts like. Issei. Cows Brigate. Azazel. Exactly more specific the faction of the heroes. Yu. Hero faction. Azazel. They are children of mythological heroes, do not underestimate them, they are strong. Tiba. Well we have our god with us looking at Issei. Gunu. Yes Bang please Issei Sama help us find my mother. Several yakai present did not like that her beauty would bow down to Issei and stopped her. Ogre. Princess Kunu, don't bow down to him looking angrily at Issei, I'm sure he's just a human, I don't even feel any power in him. Issei just got angry at what was said and let out a lot of his power, terrifying and making the yakais tremble. Issei. You idiot should stay quiet looking at the ogre that treated him I should have jumped. The yakais around felt that immense power and just knelt before Issei. Ogre. Pisari kneeling. Issei just calmed down a little and spoke to Kunu. Issei. If you want me to find your mother Kunu I will do it looking at the girl with a smile, I promise to bring your mother safe and sound. Kunu just smiled and hugged Issei, and he just stroked the little Yakai's head. M.Y. Yakai monk, well, but to prove that you are trustworthy and can keep your word, you will have to pass a small test. Issei. Test. M.Y. Follow me. The boys just went to a small forest and saw a rock in the middle of it that had several seals. M.Y. 
well, it is a sacred rock pointing to the rock they say God blessed the stone so that only someone worthy can break it. Who knew? If the only one who could crack it was. My father, although my mother doesn't even talk much about him, she says that she gave him this task years ago. Irina. And why did he say it? Who knew? He hasn't told me much about him, but he told me that if someone did greater damage than him to the rock he would be worthy. Asia. Worthy. Zenobia. What do you mean by saying? Who knew? I didn't know he would tell me when I grew up, but I guess it's this, to see if you can be trusted through the sacred rock. I say. Then I just have to break this rock looking at the rock it will be easy. And why? Yes you can also use any weapon to help you or whatever. Issei just smiled and was about to use Yui, but he heard something that bothered him. Ogre. Whispering as if someone arrogant and stupid like you could make a scratch on that rock. Even though he was whispering, Issei heard it clearly and stopped and looked at the ogre who said that. Issei. So whatever he. Looking at the ogre with a terrifying smile come on, idiot, you'll help me a little. Issei just took the ogre's head and used it to split the rock, leaving a width exactly the size of the ogre in it. The other yakai were only surprised by that and very scared by what the albino said. Issei was just watching his handiwork and it felt good to put the stupid ogre in his place. And why? Impossible, no one has done as much damage as him surprised, who knew? Issei Sama is amazing with stars in his eyes looking at Issei. Her companions were only surprised by what Iso since they thought that he would destroy her with Yui, but Azazel, Kiba and Yu only laughed at what Weso and one Serafo just looked away trying to ignore what Iso Issei. Issei. Well, I think that's enough looking at the idiot who insulted him, all unconscious, nailed to the stone, I hope you've learned your lesson, idiot. Who knew only saw Issei with stars in her eyes and hugged Issei. Who knew? Issei Sama that was incredible seeing Issei. Issei. It was nothing, but thank you and you can just call me Issei, I'm not even old enough for you to call me Sama with a smile, who knew? W well then Issei san blushing, why okay I won. What the hell is he? Hiba. He is the king of demons. You. And also the king of angels. Roswis. I still can't get used to this looking at Issei surprised, Azazel. Well this answers your questions calling the attention of the Yakes Princess Kunu, this young man is the one who defeated the evil god Loki, and also one of the legendary dragons smiling, and all of us will be here to help him find his mother. Who knew? I thank you and her help, Issei san hugging Issei. Issei. I already promised you stroking Kunu I told you I would bring your mother home, and I keep my promises. Who knew? Thank you, really, thank you hugging Issei tightly. Issei only hugged back and after a while they went to rest. Trip to Tokyo Part 2. The day our protagonist was leaving the hotel with Kunu, so he could continue looking at the city with his companions. Who knew? Issei sent today I will be his guide on his trip, so I hope it will be to his liking while he hit his ears and tails. Issei. Well you are the expert, so I count on you to guide me Kunu smiling. Kunu was only happy at the albino's words, but in a moment a girl grabbed Kunu and started hugging her. Hiryu. Kai how cute while she hugged her hey who are you little girl? Who knew? Let me go, you impertinent human, I am her guide today Safandas hugged. Hiryu. That's so cute well miss please guide us with a smile. Hadis. Yes please. After all the girls petted Kunu like a small dog she took Issei and her companions through the city, showing them historical places and even restricted places surprising everyone. After walking around the city for a while, the boys just sat down to rest and eat, since little Yakai had made it comfortable for her guests. Who knew? I hope she likes the food, maybe she's not as good as my mother, but I hope she likes it. Issei just tried the food and was surprised by the taste. Issei. It's very good you are an excellent cook Kunu, I am sure that in the future you will be an incredible wife, while well, she caressed the girl's head. The little yakai was only happy about what the boy told her and blushed a little when she felt Issei's caresses. The girls ate while watching the white-haired boy eat out of the corner of their eye, while well, Kunu only saw him happy. Zenobia. Hey Arena, don't you think Issei is acting friendlier than usual? While she looked at Issei. Arena. Well I think so looking at Issei well since she arrived he behaves more friendly and different with that girl. Rias. If she behaves like. Asia. Like a father with his son while they saw Issei blushing. The girls only blushed in Issei, noticing their gazes, turned around, but they only looked at him with a notable blush, but they all had in mind what it would be like to have a child with Issei, and they blushed more. After eating, everyone went up their path, and the little blonde took them to a bridge which, when they reached the middle, a purple cloud covered them, leaving their human companions outside. Issei. Now what the hell is happening? Diba. Lost dimension serious. Issei. What? At that, a crow and Seraphil appear on a paper with a magic circle carried by Rias. Azazel. It's good that they called us looking where they were be careful, this is the power of the long line of Sirius. The entourage only stood guard, and Issei only put the little yakai behind him, surprising the girl. So Tumas came too. Looking at both but at one point he saw Issei and just smiled. Azazel. 
Cow's Brigade Sirius. Not only him, let me introduce myself. I am Cow Cow, the leader of the hero faction. Everyone became serious, but one Issei was trying not to get angry. Issei. S sorry holding in laughter how cough what's your name? How cow? My name is Cow Cow, and may it remain engraved in your mind speaking with an arrogant smile to Issei. Issei couldn't hold it in and started laughing like crazy. Issei. Ha 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 cough cough sorry ha 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 your name sounds like a brand of chocolate milk ha ha ha. Issei's companions only stared at him although Azazel, Zenobia, Irina and Kunu also laughed. Haha he's right or like you pronounced cacao wrong ha 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 laughing. How cow. Shut up Siegfried angry and how dare you looking at Issei the name I have contains a great history and a great legacy from my ancestors. Azazel. Issei remembers that they are descendants of mythological heroes. Issei. Well putting on his battle suit I don't care who they are, I am the god of this world, and anyone who tried to harm my beautiful city, and that of little Kunu, will be exterminated while unsheathing Yui. How cow. Leonardo's turn looking at the boy. Leonardo. Hey well a purple light came out of his hands and he began to summon some monsters. Some monsters came out and started launching light attacks, but all the attacks stopped in the air and turned into swords that pointed at the monsters. They say. I'm sorry idiots, but snapping his fingers making the swords kill several monsters around that won't work. Azazel. We'll take care of it boy, you protect Kunu making spears of light appear. Yu, Kiba and Murayama easily cut several monsters, and Zenovia crushed them with her sword. Kiba. Issei, some help here while he was surrounded by 20 monsters. Issei only saw 5 meters tall wolves appear, and they began to devour and slaughter the monsters. How cow. So you are that hybrid that the entire supernatural world respects looking at Issei. Issei. If you want to die, then come, idiot looking seriously at Cow Cow. Azazel. Issei, I'll take care of that brat, you continue covering us from afar and protecting Kunu, while he launched himself towards the hero with a spear of light. Everyone attacked the hero faction, but a girl from her faction tried to attack Issei by surprise, but he only raised his intimidated aura to the heroes. The monsters were already dead on the ground left by the wolves or cut in half by Kiba and Yu, and they were now fighting against Siegfried, who only had two demonic swords in his hands. Zenovia at one point tried to cut the hero in half, but he blocked Zenovia's slash with his swords, but the blow was so strong that she cracked the floor under the hero. Zenovia. Now Kiba. Kiba tried to attack him, but a third arm that came out of the hero's back blocked the blonde's attack. Kiba. What the hell? Siegfried. This is my twice critical, although I haven't developed its balance breaker yet with a mocking smile, but I must admit that not many force me to use it, feel proud. The four swordsmen joined together and launched themselves against the hero. After a few moments another man appeared. Heracles. Well I guess we will have to participate too with a smile. As he said that, a large shadow emerged from the water under the bridge, showing a kind of metal giant. Azazel. Impossible. Gogmagog, but if he is buried in the dimensional gap looking at the giant made of metal, maybe that brat Valerie. At that moment a beautiful blonde girl with a blue witch costume and a broom came to the fight. How Kao Sama I come to deliver a message from Valerie Sama while she took out a small paper she says. Don't tell me what to do idiot imitating her voice. The giant only saw Issei's companions and raised his arm to crush them, but Issei combined the shadow wolves, and in a moment all the wolves united into a giant three-headed wolf that began to attack the meta-giant. Dot. Heracles. What the hell while looking at Issei. That oh. Lord Shinigami getting Issei's attention I heard about his fight against Loki blushing, and I'm a big fan as he approached Issei with a blush. Issei. Do you know Valerie? Looking seriously at the blonde. I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Introduce myself. My name is Lafay Pendergon. It's a pleasure to meet you, Shinigami Sama bowing. While Issei and the blonde were talking, Cow Cow was trying to launch an attack on the giant wolf, but a silver haired girl caught everyone's attention. Roswis. Damn. Heck, one can't sleep without. Hick. They make noise, invoking several magic circles and attacking the heroes. Issei. Roswis, are you drunk? Looking at the albino. Roswis. Hip shut up it's not because she's single hiccup. Roswis's attacks attacked all members of the same group. Siegfried. Cow Cow thought. Dodging an attack from Roswis that we should retreat. How Cow. I think you're right dodging another attack from the albino well listen, if you want to continue this, go to Niju Castle. There we will wait for you with the Yakai leader. Who knew? So you have my mother looking at Cow Cow return her. How Cow. Don't worry, I'll give it to them, but only if they defeat us while she disappeared into the fog. After that, Issei just made the giant wolf disappear, but before petting him a little as a thank you for the help. After a while the boys returned to the hotel to have a small meeting with the council. Azazel. Well, as you already know, we will go to that castle for Kunu's mother. The three factions are also guarding the city just in case, and the Citri clan will stay to take care of and protect the hotel. Saji. Thanks to the Mayu calming. Yuu. Cough cough faggot cough cough. Azazel. 
And the Gremory clan will attack directly and you will also go Saji, we need your sacred gear. Saji. But why? Azazel. You are the only one who can suppress the power and if you absorb a little of Azara's power you will be fine. Saji. But who will help me? Yui. Don't be a chicken boy, master will send several wolves to protect them, Lin. Or you can also try making angels made of light, Issei. Well, what are we waiting for? Standing up and putting on his battle suit let's go, all. Hi, I'm Skip Niju Castle. Upon entering the castle, the boys could only see a cow cow welcoming them, and he showed them the yakai queen trapped in a sphere. Who knew? Mom what did you do to him annoyed, cow cow. He's in a special dreamer trance, but that's not the best part of what I have planned with a macabre smile, Issei. What are you going to do? How cow. Tell me, Mr. Shinigami with mockery, wouldn't it be great if Great Red were here? I say. What? Rias. You're crazy, if he comes, he might destroy the entire city. How cow. That's why I want to find out with a manic smile, let's see if your hypothesis is true snapping his fingers. The queen took on a nine-tailed fox form. I say. I won't let you do that, idiot. How cow. Well, come, Mr. Shinigami, since time is limited with a mocking smile. How cow. Tell me who are you going to fight Siegfried? Siegfried only pointed towards Kiba, Yu and Zenobia. How cow. Good smiling and Eugene. Saying that, a blonde in orange armor appeared. Jean. I want the chestnut with the chestnut and the angel pointing to Murayama and Arena. Ericles. Well that leaves me against those two twins and the drunk woman. How cow. Well, Mr. Shinigami, let's see if your stories about being invincible are true. I say. I'll kill you, you stupid suicidal bastard unsheathing Yui and Lin. Issei and Kao Kao attacked each other. Meanwhile in the fight the swordsmen, they had problems fighting Siegfried since his balance breaker is active. Siegfried. I admit that they are strong breathing somewhat heavily, and I have heard several stories about the Grimory family, although most are from the Seker Yuite, and that Nephilim with an arrogant smile, maybe I should have fought one of them. Kiba. Maybe but we were trained by that Nephilim you talk about, so don't underestimate us. Thiba only gave another sword to Yuu, and they looked at Issei when fighting with Yui and Lin, making the hero little by little retreat, and Zenovia only attacked with all her strength, cornering the hero little by little. Siegfried became serious, and he only took out several arms from his back, and also began to attack the swordsman. Elsewhere, Saji was trying to absorb the fox Yakai's power, so that it would not open the dimensional rift. Saji. Damn, hurry, with Issei. Issei only exchanged blows with Kao Kao, and both did not take a step back. Issei. You're good I saw several cuts that he had caused to the heroes and vice versa. How cow. You two looking annoyed at the cuts that the albino gave him you will feel the force of my weapon pointing his weapon at Issei, this is the true longinus, it can kill even gods so get ready. Yui. Master is right if that pierces his heart. Issei. That won't happen Yui, calm down, I'll finish this idiot soon. The hero was only a little bothered by the damage that the albino had done to him and took out a small vial which he quickly took. Issei. Phoenix tears. How cow. Yes, it is in high demand in the human world, but I managed to get some. Issei just rushed at full speed towards the hero, and Kao Kao had a hard time keeping up with Issei, since he was very fast. How cow. Shit it's really fast if I keep going like this I lose. Issei at one point covered his body in black flames and both touched weapons, so that a large shock wave from the blow caught everyone's attention, and Kao Kao could see how his spear was little by little cracked by Issei's force as his sword collided. Gun with his. Issei moved faster and faster until he made several cuts at Kao Kao, angering him, since he could barely cut the albino. Issei. You already lost Kao Kao, give up looking seriously at Kao Kao. Kao Kao. What the hell are you talking about? Breathing heavily you haven't won. Issei. Look around you idiot. Kao Kao only saw his companions already tired and very hurt, Siegfried was missing one of the arms he invoked, and he was with blood on his head and tired, Jean had a hole in his shoulder because of Irina, and she was also tired, and Heracles alone, it could be covered with a magic circle, since Roswiss kept throwing crazy attacks, while she was still drunk. Kao Kao. Shit looking at Issei angrily maybe we will lose, but if I kill you your teammates will lose hope of winning while attacking Issei. Issei only disappeared in the blink of an eye. Kao Kao received a strong blow to the face from Issei, who had his fist covered in black flames, burning the hero a little. Kao Kao could only fall while his nose and face were bleeding, and his cheek had a big burn. Kao Kao. Damn looking furious at Issei. Issei was only walking towards an injured Kao Kao, but Issei asked to see what Saji had been sent flying, when the rope of his sacred gear exploded, due to not being able to absorb the power of the Yakai, and everyone could see how little by little a crack would appear. Kao Kao. Hahahaha <laughs> once disgusting hybrid you already lost and I won hahahaha. <laughs> Kao Kao was just laughing as the dimensional crack expanded, but the hero only stopped laughing when he saw another person come out of the crack. 
I see that you and your group kept everything in order young god, said an old man with some features of Momo, Issei. Who are you? Dreg. To past tense Wu Kong, Yu Long, Yu Dot Long. That's Dreg how long as a large green dragon came out of the crack next to the old man. The old man only approached Issei, but not for a moment. Cao Cao threw his spear, and the ape man easily stopped the spear in the air with just one finger. WK. I doubt you can beat a man who can stop one of your attacks with just one finger looking at the hero with a smile, Cao Cao. The great victorious fighter Buddha looking angrily at the old man what are you doing here, WK. We were just visiting the city and feeling in the power of the boy pointing to say, we just came to see what was happening, WK. Old man, if you help me beat this brat, I'll buy dinner looking at the old monkey man, why long? It's a promise old man, I'll take care of the yakai while going to the fox woman, WK. Well, I'm going to spank you brat with a smile, Siegfried. Cow cow. Looking at his boss, how cow. We have come too far to lose now seeing the angry old man, nor will I lose here as he recited a few words, but was stopped when he felt something pass through his shoulder, AI looking at how Issei had shot with blue rose, Issei. I don't care, but I won't let you continue with your stupidity, you idiot. The hero only got angrier and summoned a fog that little by little took away his companions, and he disappeared before saying a few last words. How cow. I assure you that you will pay for this disgusting Nephilim glaring at Issei as he disappeared, Issei. Well, I'll wait for you, idiot bathing Yui and Lin and holstering his revolver, you guys did well looking at his other tired companions, Yu. Thank you, it was all thanks to your training breathing heavily, Kiba. Yes it was hard, but we did it with a smile. After that the great dragon freed Kunu's mother, and the girl only went to hug her mother, but she did not wake up. Kunu. Mom, mom come on wake up trying to wake up her mother, Lin. Master I feel like life force is decreasing, she is dying, Issei. Shit, Kunu. No crying come on mom, Issei. Kunu, get away looking seriously at the giant fox I'm going to save her. Rias. I know what are you going to do, Issei. I will only restore her vitality and then she can live. Issei solo touched the fox's chest and covered his hands with white fire which ran through the fox's fur. Little by little, Issei healed the great fox and discovered that she had been poisoned. Issei. They poisoned her so they could cap at her looking at a small spot on her neck, I have to get the poison out of her system serious. Issei just started sucking and spitting the poison out of the yakai's neck until her condition stabilized and the small dot looking away from her neck, Issei pulled out her wings out of instinct and continued healing the yakai. The fox little by little began to glow and she began to transform into a beautiful blonde woman with a beautiful body. The woman was slowly opening her eyes and she could only see a shadow with a pair of beautiful wings in front of her. Who knew? Mom she said as she cried and hugged her mother, Izaka. Kunu. What happened? Who is he? And. Looking at Issei, one of her hands was on her chest, why is he touching my breasts? Realizing where she had her hand, Issei quickly released it. Issei. Sorry Miss Yuzaka looking nervously at the woman, Kunu. Mom, he is Issei Hayuadu, he saved you and prevented you from dying by touching one of your breasts looking happy, Issei. Kunu, don't say it like that with a drop of sweat, Izaka. Did he save me? Rias. That's right, Mrs. Yuzaka, Issei saved her and extracted the poison that she had in her blood. Who knew? Yes look showing a small hickey that Issei gave her when removing the poison from her neck. When the girl saw the hickey they just looked at Issei in a bad way, and he only apologized for that, while his friends and brothers laughed at how lucky Issei was. Time skip. That same night the Yakes and companions of Issei celebrated the return of their queen in the Hello World. Azazel. Haha ha, well it was to be expected from the strongest yakai in the world, well he was drinking with Wukong and Raswas, well done boy looking at Issei with a smile, Izaka. What do you mean by that, daughter? Who knew? Issei sent Iso the test of the sacred rock and almost split the rock in half, with the head of an ogre happy was surprisingly, Izaka. MMMMM I see while she looked at Issei with a not so holy smile, time skip next day, Issei and his companions were waiting for their train to go home, well they said goodbye to Kunu and Yuzaka. Issei. Goodbye Kunu stroking the little blonde's head, Kunu. Issei-san, you will return, right? Looking at Issei with a small blush, Issei. Of course you will be the first to know and I will visit you and your mother caressing the blonde, Izaka. Thank you for everything, Issei-kun. Issei. It was nothing, if you have another similar problem just let me know and I'll come right away with a smile, Izara. Oni-chan, hurry up, the train has arrived while getting on the train, Issei. I'm coming looking at his companions boarding the train well, goodbye and Kunu. Who knew? Yes. Issei. I want you to take good care of your mother, yes. Who knew? Hey happy. Issei after that just got on the train and they went home. Izaka alone went with his daughter to his palace and also saw the sacred rock almost broken in half and the woman was only surprised. Izaka. 
impossible I know he is a god, but he damaged the rock a lot looking at the rock you know what that means, don't you Kunu? Kunu? What mom? Izaka. In the future, when you replace me as queen, you must have strong children with a mocking smile, and a say kun apparently is the most suitable. Kunu? I know blushing, Izaka. Of course, if you don't want to, I can give you a little brother with a mocking smile, Kunu. No, he is mine, Izaka. Arakunu laughing, Kunu just blushed when she heard what he said and Yuzaka just started laughing, and they both just went home. Part 19 Rest Day. The day was a calm day, and a certain albino was waking up, and when he opened his eyes he could only see. Issei. Breasts. Looking at Ria's breasts in front of him, Issei just got up and asked to see Ria's, Asia and Yui and Lin in his bed, he doesn't care much, since it was normal for him to see the naked body of one of his girls sleeping next to him, especially Ria's. Dot. Issei just got up and when he went down he could only see Kiba and Yu looking at their cell phones, as if it were the most important thing. Issei. What are you doing now? Looking at both, and why do they look at their cell phones so much? Kiba. And nothing, it's nothing nervous. Issei. I don't know why I don't believe them, would you like to tell them what's wrong? Yu? Well. Well on the trip to Tokyo Kiryu and Kadis gave us their numbers, and we have been talking for several days. Kiba. And now we are talking to them, but they don't respond looking at their cell phones, they say. You idiots are really in love looking at both of you well maybe you're taking a shower or something, don't always stare at your cell phones, you look like idiots. Kiba. You're right while leaving his cell aside and by the way, they say, thank you very much for your advice. Yu. Yes they were very useful, they say. Did they invite you out? Both of them denied the smell with shame. They say. You really are idiot sign guys, you have to take the first step or someone else will take them away from you, and you better hurry because according to Murayama, they both told you that they are in love with someone looking at both of them with mockery. When they both heard that, they only got serious and began to make plans to be able to invite both of them out and making a little noise. Asper. Why are they making so much noise? Half asleep, they say. It's nothing Gasper, just ignore them, tell me do you want to eat? Gasper. Hey, I'm Skip, Issei was walking with his girls while he was envied by all the younger men around. Issei. Hey girls gaining everyone's attention have you seen that idiot Yu and Kiba? I haven't seen them since this morning. Rias. They said they had something important to do. Asia. Yes they said very important. Issei. Hahaha <laughs> I see, well as they say you just need a little push. Zenovia. Push for what? Issei. Maybe they'll find out one day, if both idiots make it. I'm Skip. Issei just arrived at his classroom and asked to see Kiba and Yu talking to their girlfriends who had a small blush when talking to both of them. Issei just left them and sat at his desk waiting for the boring classes to start. I'm Skip. Hearing the recess bell, Issei alone and headed to the occult club without knowing that three girls were already waiting for him. Upon entering, Issei could only see that there was no one. He just lay down on one of the couches and proceeded to sleep peacefully, without knowing that three girls were waiting to make their move. Issei just closed his eyes little by little, but before falling asleep, he could see three shadows that he just ignored, and he just fell asleep. Time skip. As Issei began to open his eyes little by little, he could feel a pleasant sensation in his crotch. Lemon skip please read it on website. Zenovia. Issei I still want to continue while she hugged Issei's torso. Arena. It's not fair, you hit Akeno twice, I want a two pouting, Akeno. Looks like we can still continue my cute ice cun kissing Issei. Time skip. After a few hours of Issei having quality time with the three beautiful girls, we can now see Issei with a zombie face, but little by little, he regained his skin color as he walked through the schoolyard. Issei. Sigh I'm tired I just want to go home and sleep while looking at the blue sky. Issei continued walking until in a small corner behind the school Yu and Kiba could be seen crying. Issei. Now what happened to you two? Looking at both, Kiba and Yu only saw Issei and hugged him like his father or his older brother. Yu. Issei we failed sniff we lost sniff. Issei. What happened to them? And how did they lose? Kiba. Well they sniff were invited out and they accepted, we lost. Issei. MMMM I see looking at both. Yu. Brother, please, you have to have some advice for this, you are the king of the harem. Issei. Since when am I the king of the harem? Kiba. Well it's a little nickname that Serzich's and Azazel spread throughout the supernatural world and well. Issei. I understand, I'll take care of that later, and I don't know about you. Both. E. Issei. Look, you only have two options now, the first is for you to confess and hope that they accept your feelings, and the other is well. Let say it's not pretty at all and highly unrecommended. Kiba. And do you think it will be successful? Issei. Well, with his reputation for being pretty and kind children, etc., he has a 60 40ths in his favor. Yu. Good getting up it's decided come on Kiba, Issei is right, it's now or never, Kiba. 
Yes, let's go. Both boys just ran off in the girl's direction, hoping that Issei's advice would work. Issei. King of the harem, it doesn't sound so bad he said with a smile. Time skip. When Issei arrived at each, he could only see Yui and Lin with an entire ice cream cart while they and the others ate. There he is. Hello ice with a smile. Yui. Hello master eating we brought ice cream showing several ice cream popsicles. Lin. And very good. Issei. Sai well give me one she said with a smile. Issei's girls only ate, but certain girls who previously gaped him looked at him with a blush, and Akeno only licked her lollipop in a seductive way, making the Issei junior move a little. Time skip night. Issei was watching TV quiet while he hugged his girls, but the sound of the door caught the attention of everyone he was there. Kiba. Issei we have problems slamming the door. Yu. It's the girls. Issei. Don't tell me they got cold feet now. Kiba. No, that's not it, they were captured. Issei. What? Yu. Well we were just looking for her, but a group of renegade demons captured them and took them away, we have to do something. Issei. And I wanted to have a normal day snapping his fingers making his battle suit appear fine, but to track them, I need a small signature of their vitality. Kiba. Would this help? Showing a small torn piece of fabric that seemed to be a part of the skirt of some of them. Issei. Perfect. Issei only sniffed the small piece of cloth for a few moments like a dog to feel the life force of each one of them. Issei. They are to the east perhaps in a small abandoned warehouse come on, all. Hi, and another side. Both kidnapped girls were in a small cage along with a few other women. The EMON1. Looks like we had a good hunt today looking at Kiryu and Kadis, we caught two beauties ha 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 ha. The EMON2. Yes, the boss will be happy and maybe let us play with them looking lustfully at both of them. Shut up, idiots a voice echoed throughout the place, and the demons only became tense as they heard footsteps. From the shadows a man emerged and a boy of apparently no more than 20 or 30 years old could be seen wearing a blue trench coat. Tell me how the girls are looking in a macabre way at both teenagers. Kiryu. You you seduced us and then you kidnapped us looking with hatred at the man. Hadis. Why do you do this? It's not obvious why I loved them with a blush and a sick face the first time I saw them both I fell in love, and now I want them both to be mine breathing heavily wed, after I still had that blush on my face expensive. Kiryu. We don't even know your name how do you want us to marry you idiot? Uo forgive my rudeness, my name is Francis, a pleasure. Kiryu. And why do you have all those women wax too? Francis. My subjects kidnapped them, but none of them interested me, so I only have them as toys. Haddis. You're a damn sick person. Francis. Yes, tell me more beautiful every time you say something like that to me my heart only beats harder and harder, she said with a blush and a sick smile. The man only heard something explode, and when he returned he could only see how a scan of black fire destroyed his door and eliminated the demons that protected the door. I say. I'm sorry, I'm sick, but they're not yours appearing through the fire. Francis only paled when he saw the person approaching him. The EMON1. And no PC could it be looking at Issei terrified. The EMON2. I it's T the Shinigami looking terrified at the hooded man. The drawings only retreated and some just fell on their knees looking at the boy in the black trench coat. Issei. You idiots have a lot of girls kidnapped, you are trash looking at the demons and releasing a little of his aura, making some demons just start to fall, and others just crying begging that he won't kill them. Francis. Why what are you doing here, meddling in my plan somewhat angry. Issei. Those two girls pointing at Kiryu and Kadis are under my protection, and you will also free the others if you don't want me to kill them all he said seriously. Francis. Of course not they will be my beautiful wives, and I will not let anyone interfere. Issei. Well then you will die idiot. In the blink of an eye, Issei appeared behind the man with his sword drawn, and when he sheathed it again when he clicked click, Francis's head only separated from his body and fell from him rolling on the ground. The demons and girls could only be scared by such a scene, and the demons only fell to the ground completely terrified. Issei. Idiot kicking the dead man's head. Issei only cut the bars of the cage, freeing the kidnapped girls. Issei. Are everyone okay? The girls in the cage could only see his savior in front of him, and they all saw his beautiful red eyes that showed that he was worried about them, but Kiryu and Kadis asked to recognize the hooded man. Both. Issei Haidu. Issei was happy to see that none of them seemed to be hurt or had any signs of abuse. Issei. We have to go looking at everyone. Issei at one point had to dodge a blow from apparently Francis's headless body. Issei. What the hell watching the body move without a head. Francis. Ha 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 his head still on the ground began to speak believe that they will stop me, I fought for love child, well his body took his head and joined it back to his body, even if you cut my head I will never die I am a zombie. Issei. What? Francis. You see I died a long time ago, but an alchemist experimented with my body to revive me. Issei. Wow a zombie fence I think I have it complicated with sarcasm. Francis. 
insulin but as I was saying, not only did it revive me, apparently I can store people's lives, so every time I die I will only revive again and again, until I use up the souls inside me. I say. Well, I'll only have to kill you a thousand times as many times as necessary. Issei ran up to the man and he punched the ground hard, breaking the entire pavement. Francis. Don't think I'm going to make it easy for you. Issei only created several wolves made of shadow that began to devour the zombie's body while he carried the kidnapped girls away from the place. The renegade demons had already fled the place a while ago and the Gremory entourage had arrived at the place. Rias. What happened here looking at the destruction of Issei and Francis? Kiryu. Rias senpai what are you doing here? Rias. Then I'll explain to you, where is Issei? The loud bang sounded, and upon seeing it everyone saw Issei hitting Francis's face with black fire in his hands. Issei. Hit now hit death hit. Francis gave him a very strong blow that sent Issei flying to the other side of the place. Issei. Shit that hurt me, how did I kill that idiot? Francis. It's useless, and I've collected more than 1000 souls over the years, it's impossible for you to kill me. Issei. Yui, Lin tell me why I can send this idiot to hell. Yui. If you can, you have to find the soul collector inside. Lin. It has to be somewhere in his chest or heart, it's like a little purple jewel. Issei. Thank you girls, you are the best. Issei only attacked the man, stabbing several places on his body trying to search for the jewel. Issei at one point while stabbing the right side of his abdomen near his heart he heard a clank, and with just that sound, he could tell that he was able to find the jewel. Issei. Well let's see how immortal you are idiot smiling. Issei created several swords of light to impale the zombie, but he dodged them and headed towards Kiryu and Cadis. Francis. Come on, come with me, I will take care of you and love you for the rest of my non-existent life. The man lunged at both of them, but Issei kicked the man's face hard, breaking his skull. Issei. I'm sorry but they don't want to go with you idiot watching the man get up again. Francis. What do you know? You idiot, you don't even know if they really love me or not. Issei. Well then what do you say girls? Looking at both do you want to stay with him? Kiryu. No thanks, we dot we want someone else he said with a small blush. Haddis. If the boy we like is cute, somewhat selfless and also always helps others, more than once we have seen him helping various people with criminals and other things. Two swordswomen became a little excited upon hearing what the two said and prayed to the Mao that they were the ones they were talking about. Francis. But I can give you everything, including immortality like me, why don't you come with me? Kiryu. We don't care about immortality, we just want to be with him and live happily with that person. Issei. You already heard them, they don't love you, accept it. Francis just lowered his head and started crying. Issei. Oh my god please don't cry, it's very uncomfortable looking at the man. Francis. I have never dot I have never. Raising his face I had been so happy with a blush and a sick look I had never felt this feeling, the pain of being rejected, it is fascinating while hugging himself and moving like a worm on the floor. Issei. Okay it's official you're sick, Francis. But if you are not mine then you will not be anyone's. The undead only tried to crush both girls with one blow, but Issei only stopped the blow with his left hand. Issei. You're not going to hurt him while I'm here, you idiot. Both girls had a big blush when they heard what the albino said, and his hearts raced when he stopped the blow to protect them. Issei only created swords made of light that impaled the man and crucified him on a wall. Issei only covered his sword in black fire, and with a thrust with Yui, he shattered the glass next to his heart. Francis. Aiiiiii what did you kick me out? Issei. I just destroyed the crystal that kept the soul so that you could revive with your heart. Francis. Aiiiiiii oh I can't die. Issei. I'm sorry but you killed many innocent people just to trap their souls so you could revive. Francis. You looking at Issei with a smile haha apparently I lost, but you're right, I killed a lot of people, and maybe I don't deserve love, but death sigh well, cough cough just take care of them for me okay. Issei. Okay, I'll do it, goodbye using his white flames to burn the man's body. Issei could only see a small glow that came out of the man's corpse and went to the sky accompanied by a light. Issei after that only returned to his other companions. Issei. Are you girls okay? Looking at Kiryu and Kadis, both girls just hugged Issei tightly while he just hugged back. Kiryu. Thank you Issei-san. Kadis. Really thank you Haidu-san. Issei. Don't worry, it was nothing girls seeing both of them I would do it a thousand times if it was just to save them. When they said that, a feeling in them that they kept alone overflowed, and both of them in a quick movement kissed Issei in front of everyone. Issei was in sock, and two swordsmen were just heartbroken instantly. Issei. What are you doing separating from the kiss, Haddis? What's wrong Issei-kun, can't we kiss our now boyfriend with a smile? Tiba's heart only turned to ashes upon hearing those words. Kiryu. Yes Ice-kun we just wanted to kiss our hero and boyfriend. Biwu only felt her heart being chewed and then vomited out upon hearing those words. Rias. Hear what they say, I never agreed to be his boyfriend, Azara. 
If only Chan is mine, well in this case ours, I say. Girls getting the attention of Kiryu and Cadis I'm sorry, but I can't accept your feelings surprising everyone I'm not the right man for you, but taking Kiba and Yuu by the shoulders, here are some guys better than me. Kiba. Issei surprised, Yuu. Brother looking at his brother, both. No thanks they said serious and cold, the hearts of both swordsmen only finished breaking. Kiryu. We only love you Ice-kun, well for a long time, but when we heard the rumors that you are dating your girls from the occult club, we just got a little depressed. Hadis. We also tried to forget you, but we failed in the worst possible way, and well here we are. Asia. Kiryu-chan so that was the boy you liked. Murayama. You too Cadis. Hadis. Yes and this was a sign of fate, and it tells us that we have to be Issei-kun's wives at all costs, so we hope they accept us. The Issei girls just thought about it a little, and two swordsmen were lying on the ground. Kiryu. Ah and by the way, if you don't let us, we will tell everyone what happened and that Ice-kun is a great hero, he said with a tender smile. The girls from Issei's harem just had a little chat and then gave their answer. Rias. Well they will be part of Ice's harem, but they will have to show that they really love it, both. Hi, Issei. Sigh what a long day looking at her brother and Kiba on the ground, pretending that they are both dead, I hope they don't hold a grudge against me for this. Time skip, after they left both girls at home and they both said goodbye kissing Issei, our protagonist was in the living room of his house sitting in front of his brother and friend. Issei. Well guys, how are you somewhat nervous about what will happen next, Kiba? Issei said while his hair covered his eyes. Issei. Yes. You. Sai you were right surprising Issei we were cowards and we couldn't get them, but we promise. Kiba. That one day we will get a girlfriend and you will be proud of us, Issei. Wait, aren't you guys mad at me? Kiba. Not really since you tried to reject both of their feelings and make them like us. Yuu. And they were also already in love with you before, so they were probably going to reject us anyway, but still thank you brother. Issei. Thank you, why? Kiba. To prove that friendship is more important than girls. Issei just smiled and the three of them gave each other a hug number Nahomo. Issei. Well it's better that we go to sleep. Both. Hi, the three of them only chatted as they went to their rooms, and in the end they all fell asleep happy and content. Well I hope you like it there, give it a little star and well. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.